My name is John Anderson. I'm with the BC Cattlemen's Association, a director and the chair of the research uh, committee. And this is uh, Clem. He's part of the next, well, a couple generations from now of the cattle business in British Columbia. So we're very happy to be here today to present some information about an ongoing research project that's taking place. So in this video, we have the great opportunity for Stephen Kega, a researcher with Thompson Rivers University, to share some of his research and some of his methodology and some of its relevance to the cattle industry in British Columbia. Stephen's final research will end at the end of this year and we're very happy to be able to present this information because we think it's extremely relevant to the cattle industry in British Columbia in as much as there is 2% of grasslands in British Columbia and 98% of forested lands in British Columbia. So by far the vast majority of grazing that's done in this province is done in a forested setting and it is really the basic backbone of the grazing for ranches in British Columbia. Uh, my name is Stephen Kega. Uh, I hold a bachelor's degree in uh, agriculture engineering uh, with a focus in soil and water management. Uh, currently doing my master's uh, at TRU, Thompson Rivers University, in uh, environmental sciences. Uh, this is my research area. Uh, it's an agroforestry research, which was a uh, forest before. The general goal was to uh, uh, introduce ranching industry into a forest industry. And uh, uh, the method that was applied here was a strip, thin uh, strip thinning method in order to uh, uh, assess uh, forage productivity in, uh, in this strip thin uh, silver pasture. Hi there, I'm Lisa Zabek. I work with the Ministry of Agriculture out of Kamloops and I'm the agroforestry specialist for the province. I often get asked, what is agroforestry? Agroforestry, you'll see references uh, in tech transfer materials, literature, TV, occasionally. It's five different agroforestry systems, civil pasture, alley cropping, integrated riparian management, uh, windbreak shelter belts, and forest farming. They're basically intentional integrated management systems which blend agriculture, forestry, and conservation practices and outputs. So we're actually looking at benefits for each of those three that accrue to each of those three, if, if that makes sense. Civil pasture is the integration of livestock forages and timber management, which then you're looking at addressing specific objectives. So it's just like any other set of tools, whether it's traditional, conventional agri agricultural tools, forestry tools, uh, conservation um, practices that you might be integrating into whatever you're doing on the landscape. You're starting with your question, you're starting with your objective, taking a look at what's available to you and assessing it for fit, basically. Does it fit? Doesn't it? If it doesn't, you're on to another tool. So one of the questions I will get is how does civil pasture differ from forest grazing? We have a long history of forest grazing in the province and really if you think about things as a continuum, we've got overlapping uh, grazing licenses or leases, uh, timber licenses, recreation, First Nations values, um, a whole series of things. Could be mining, a whole series of things across the landscape. And when you look at it, it sometimes it's referred to as a multiple use landscape. So how do we all work together? And for any of these projects and these pilots that we're engaged in, with all of the different partners because if you've got overlapping land uses then you, the only way forward is by partnership and collaboration. So when you're looking at things it's like okay what are those interests? What do the different uh, perspectives? What are they looking for? What's that path forward? Right now we're standing on one of the newer pilots in the province and it's a partnership between Toko Industries and BC Cattlemen's and Ministry of Agriculture and Forest Lands, Natural Resource Operations and Rural Development and Thompson Rivers University and Beef Cattle Research Council. And this is a really, they're all cool actually, but this is a really cool one. Um, you know, Toko is looking at some of these uh, mid-rotation lodgepole pine stands. There's some larger diameters in here. They have, you know, the forest industry, we're in the midterm fiber supply shortfall. So the idea was in stands where there are some larger diameters is to take a look at what kind of 
fiber harvest and the attributes of those timber pieces, uh, the characteristics, the quality, do a test. What could potentially be a yield in a stand similar to this and what kind of forage resources could be injected in these commercially thin stands. And the, one of the interesting pieces to this project is commercial thinning is, is um, I guess conventionally over time it's a selection with uh, e equidistant more or less between trees, individual trees selected and moved out. Here we've got essentially a strip commercial thinning approach where strips 10, 15 and 20 meter wide have been cut They've been seeded down, well, a little bit of site prep, more from the perspective of a summer harvest. So there was some seed bed created, forages were seeded into it, and you can see the forage response. Between, say, the 20, me 20 meter uh, strip is a 40 meter timber buffer. So between the 15 meter strips is a 30 meter timber buffer, and between the 10 is a 20 meter timber buffer. So it's taking a look at how does the timber stand respond to those extra light resources uh, what does that actually over time model out to in terms of timber yield taking a look at the forages and some of the carbon and you're going to hear Stephen talking later on about his uh, research and that's really where that research partnership comes in in terms of operationally TOLCO and Ministry of Ag and Ministry of Forests worked with TRU design an actual replicated randomized complete block design as a full replicated experimental design, but it's operational. And that's one of the huge pieces to this project is that the, the results from this come from an actual operational application. And so when you look at, so the first three, four or five years of information, that gives you a really good solid introductory data set. And then episodically, whether it's five years down the road, 10 years down the road, and ideally, you know, full rotation, which might be 60 or 70 years, what is, what has actually occurred? What's been the yield? What are some of the other attributes? Uh, how does that compare to our controls, which are an unthinned standard timber uh, stand? This uh, strip thinning uh, te technique or method uh, has been applied uh, on uh, three different widths. We have uh, the 10 meter uh, strip uh, width, we have 15 meter strip width and 20 meter strip width. Uh, the general uh, goal of this uh, type of approach was to uh, assess how forage are gonna, like the effect of this strip thinning on uh, forage productivity and also uh, how the tree are gonna be productive by uh, creating more space. It means that that's uh, uh, the productivity of the tree on the, the remaining uh, trees. Uh, part of the investigation, uh, the first uh, objective that uh, we have here is to uh, uh, quantify uh, vegetation uh, quantity. Means that here we are quantifying um, the agronomic seeds that was planted in uh, October 2018 and uh, we planted four different uh, agronomic species. Uh, we planted uh, orchid grass, meadow brome, intermediate wheatgrass, and white clover. And uh, we are quantifying that separately with the native uh, palatable species. Those are plants that uh, they were in, in this forest before uh, these thinning activities. And we also quantify the, the unpalatable, means that those are like shrubs species. Those are like, um, plant species that are not uh, preferable by uh, cows. Uh, how we are doing this, uh, we use a Dobmeyer method, which has been used in North America for so, so long. And uh, we use quadrat uh, assessment. We uh, assess uh, percent, percentage cover. We ID each uh, plant species into uh, this quadrat. And then after that, we are clipping uh, all the plant species that are found in these uh, quadrats by separate, separating them in those three uh, categories that I, I just said. Um, after that, we'll uh, take the vegetation in the lab and, and, and we are planning to assess the quality of, that, of the vegetation. It means that we want to compare the quality of the agronomic seeds planted, uh, native plant, uh, and native that was, uh, were here in, in, in the strips. Uh, in 2018, before uh, strip thinning activities, we did a, a baseline uh, data collection 
and it was a completely forest. We had uh, an opportunity to uh, evaluate or uh, quantify uh, different uh, plant species in this uh, forest. And this year, uh, after our clipping activities and our uh, plant survey activities, we are, hope, we are, we are planning to uh, compare uh, the vegetation growth in these open strips uh, with the vegetation growth uh, in the reserve strips. And, 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 and according to our, like with our eyes, we can see a very big difference, but uh, statistically, uh, we'll be able to see how significant uh, the difference is uh, by uh, opening uh, the forest versus uh, having completely uh, trees. Uh, by assessing, doing the lab analysis for all these uh, different forage, uh, forage categories, uh, our goal is to uh, assess the nutrient content into uh, the forage. We want to see uh, how much nutrient content this vegetation to these strips are uh, 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 producing, uh, including uh, crude protein, uh, we are uh, assessing uh, the amount of fibers into all these forage categories, and uh, uh, all other chemicals like uh, fat, ash, and other different chemicals that are uh, really uh, important for, uh, uh, for cows. Uh, we are also uh, assessing uh, plant richness and diversity, because we want to see if uh, how diverse our agronomic seeds planted are and how diverse uh, the shrubs are. It means that the, 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 uh, all those uh, for, uh, plant species that are not uh, preferable by cows, how diverse are they uh, versus the agronomic and, and native uh, species. Uh, in addition to that, we are also collecting soil. Uh, after strip thinning, we wanted to uh, to understand how the uh, how uh, these uh, thinning activities uh, affected or impacted uh, soil carbon sequestration, the third objective uh, here is we are uh, assessing uh, after the strip thinning how uh, these thinning uh, are gonna affect or they affected our uh, the remand of the trees. Uh, here we, we will be assessing uh, the DBH of the trees and also the canopy cover. Means that uh, part of it, we, like according to um, so many researches, uh, the researchers say that when you, uh, up, you apply a strip thinning uh, into a forest, you are creating more space and uh, uh, you, you are in improving or increasing the health of the remand of the trees. Hopefully, uh, by next year when we start our uh, tree assessment, we'll be able to see uh, the difference in DBH. Uh, and this will be compared to our baseline uh, uh, analysis we did uh, before strip thinning. We did a baseline in 2018, and uh, part of the baseline was to assess the DBH and the canopy uh, cover. And uh, we will compare that with uh, next year assessment and see how different uh, the DBH and canopy cover is. Uh, we added uh, one more component in uh, uh, this uh, silver pasture assessment. Uh, the, we, we, are, uh, we are trying to uh, add uh, technology, uh, assessing all those parameters uh, without uh, physical uh, assessment. We are using uh, drone uh, UAVs, in, uh, and, and what we are doing, we are we equipped our UAV with a multispectral sensor. What they do, they capture the sunrise and they assess, as the sensor is able to assess the health, vegetation, uh, vegetation phenotype, and then assess how uh, the photosynthesis, photosynthesis rate is in, in different uh, strip width. Hopefully, uh, by uh, the end of this year, we'll, we are planning to do three different flights into uh, 10 meter strip width, 15 meter strip width, and 20 meter strip width. And uh, we are creating a map, a uh, multispectral uh, map that will help us to assess how all those uh, different strip width are different in terms of uh, vegetation health. Part of what the drone is assessing uh, in these uh, three different strips is the successional growth, growth of the vegetation, uh, which will uh, determine uh, the health of the vegetation into different strips. 
means that what we, have, we will be we will do is to uh, compare how uh, according to time how the veget vegetation are growing and how these strips are uh, influencing the growth uh, we, uh, we, 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 we will uh, co correlate, co correlate all our results our lab results with the drone results to see if there's a positive correlation between uh, the sensor result and uh, the ground clipping result the second component uh, after uh, the quality of the forage uh, the assessment we are doing of, on the quality of the forage, we are also uh, assessing uh, the uh, vegetation yield into different strips. Uh, with the drone uh, side, we are using uh, the drone help us to create uh, two different maps, uh, the digital ter terrain model and, uh, and digital uh, elevation model. Uh, with elevation and, and, and terrain model, we can uh, combine them together and give us uh, the difference in height. Uh, and, and, and after that, we'll, uh, we'll also compare the, the result that uh, the drone gave us with the clipping that we are doing, because we are, after the clipping, we are planning to uh, weigh all the vegetation in the lab, and then we'll, we'll be able to compare the height the drone gave us with the uh, with the yield that we, uh, we got from clipping, uh, an in interesting observation so far uh, this year compared to uh, the first year uh, doing the, the research here, uh, we've been seeing uh, so many cows actually coming and uh, using these uh, open strips, grazing in this open strip, and the most inter interesting part is how we've we've been seeing a high number of uh, white-tailed deer actually. Uh, using these strips. Uh, I remember last week when I was doing my research here, I saw uh, more than uh, six to seven deer actually uh, roaming around and uh, grazing these uh, open strips. Um, uh, after the uh, vegetation clipping, we are planning to introduce, uh, to lay the cows in to start uh, grazing this area and uh, we've installed this exclosure for uh, our next year research uh, and uh, the purpose of this exclosure is to uh, assess uh, uh, forage utilization uh, we are hoping that uh, by next the next month uh, we'll have cows and they'll be grazed in all these trips already designed and uh, at that point it will give us a clear indication on uh, how much forage they've been using uh, by uh, compare, comparing them with uh, the forage in the exclosure. So in conclusion, we really hope you enjoy this video, benefit from some of the research that's been done, and we welcome you to share this video with whomever you think it may be applicable to or who might see some value in it, because we think it's an excellent piece of work and we're proud to be part of it. Thank you very much from the BC Cattlemen Association.